Good morning. I'm Nicky Campbell. Welcome to The Big Questions. Today we're live from Bradford Grammar School in West Yorkshire to debate one very big question. Do we need a British Islam? Welcome, everyone, to The Big Questions. <laughs> now, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the United Kingdom. The 2011 census found two and three quarter million Muslims in the UK and their numbers are growing ten times as fast as the general British population. But there's as much divide as unites British Muslims. Their forebears came from very different parts of the world. Here in Bradford, most Muslims originated from Pakistan. In the east end of London, Bangladeshis predominate. But others emigrated here from the Caribbean or Arab countries or Africa or the Far East. And then there's the converts, 100,000 of them. Two thirds of those are women. Now, what unites them all is where they live now, Britain. And some British Muslims are now asking if the time has come to develop a distinctly British version of Islam. So we have gathered together Muslim theologians, academics, social activists, scholars, campaigners and politicians to debate that idea. Uh, you can join in too on Twitter or online by logging on to bbc.co.uk slash the big questions. Follow the links to our discussion forums and there's going to be lots of encouragement and contributions for an excellent, uh, lively local audience here in Bradford where we are live this morning. Do we need a British Islam? Good morning, everybody. Adam Dean, uh, you made a panorama about this, Adam, about a year ago. Um, what would a British Islam be? What would it look like? Um, it would definitely be uh, uh, an Islam that hasn't been hijacked by extremists and, and uh, fundamentalists. Uh, unfortunately, one of the greatest challenges that we have right now for Islam is that the dominant reading of Islam is one that has lost all of its beauty and lost its ethical content. So, uh, what is an extremist? What is a conservative? What is an orthodox Muslim? I mean, these, these terms are very difficult to define, aren't they? Yes, they, they are uh, di very difficult. Um, what you will find within the Muslim community now is that there's a tension between sort of the rationalist Muslims and the anti-rationalist Muslims. And unfortunately, uh, the uh, anti-rationalist Muslims that are influenced by let's say, sort of puritanical readings of Islam, an example of that is Wahhabism, have the upper hand, and, that, and there are many reasons why that is. And can one you, of the can challenges you that... Can puritanical Islam? What does it mean, puritanical? Well, puritanical is a reading of Islam that is literal, which is divorced from ethics. So it's a, it's a, a particular idea that, that you can only understand good and evil, right and wrong, from religious scripture. And individuals that are, I would deem to be puritanical, have a very uh, literalist understanding of, uh, say, the, the hadith, um, and what they want to do is they want to apply... The sayings of Muhammad. Yeah. The I, cannot, of the... I cannot really see the link <coughs> of this to extremism. What well, we have to appreciate that Islam, likewise Christianity, are universal religion. They are practiced by different races in different countries, and there's no such thing as British Islam, American Islam. Yes, the context is different. Yes, there are British Muslims, American Muslims. But then I find it really problematic to actually paint all Muslims with the same brush and say, you know what, there are like puritanical well, I don't Islam, think he's doing that, with and respect. it's linked to extremism because yeah. the reality okay. Hang on a is. I, I don't Muslim think it's true. To me, I'll come back to you, Adam. It's not a homogeneous. Yeah. As you, as you it's said, not to, homogenous. There is a diversity to me, Nikarzi, one second, Muslims. please. Okay, one second. I, t I take your point, and you made your point there. Nikki, it's I, it's unfair just... to, to, uh, to you know, tell everyone with the same brush. I, I, I want to ask Adam another question in a minute. For, to, to me, Nikarzi, British Muslim for secular democracy, is, um, is conservative, so called orthodox Muslim, is that a problem? that form of Islam? Very much so, um, and in my view there are three elements to a distinctly British Islam. The first one is respect for a plurality of beliefs, including those that were traditionally taboo, such as identifying as a progressive Muslim. The second uh, element is uh, working together towards the common good um, as Muslims and non-Muslims in but a democratic do country. Exactly. And the this third is element Islam. is respect for modern equality and human rights standards. Exactly. And sadly, this is where some of the conservative interpretations no, of Islam the, have fallen no, that's down. The thing. I, 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 we'll be that we back side in a minute. I just, if you'll forgive me. Well, no, forgive me, I just want to get our definitions right and I will come to you, uh, I promise. Yeah. No um, okay, uh, so... Th 
equality, such as what, uh, you know, a, a forced gender segregation? Yes, a prime example is the university's UK guidance on gender segregation in public universities, which a coalition of secular activists and groups, including Muslims, had to work very hard to overturn. And it was later affirmed by the Equality and Human Rights Commission that gender segregation in public universities is unlawful. Sexual equality, gender equality, and those yes, things. Yes, exactly, okay. LGBT equality. Adam, well, OK, I'm coming. I'm coming. OK, <laughs> I promise. Yeah. Uh, Adam, tell me one uh, theological aspect which you believe is no longer applicable to the modern age. Yeah. Before I do that, uh, I just want to clarify that it's slightly caricature uh, understanding of what I was saying. I, I don't think all Muslims are uh, in this predicament. I think that the dominating voices that seem to have the loudest voices in, within our community are a minority, but these individuals that are pushing this type of reading of Islam. Well, here's an example. Well, you can ask the Imam. Yeah. You can ask the Imam. Yeah. Question. Well, th th there's an example. A majority of these uh, scholars, majority of, of, of uh, these individuals that dominate the intellectual Islamic discourse, believe that it is legitimate to kill an apostate, someone who has decided to leave the Islamic faith. Now, that is the epitome, the epitome of irrationality, to kill someone for changing their mind. So why would you ask the Imam? What's your direct question to the Imam? Well, I mean, would you support such a, a ruling? Um, it, when you're talking about uh, Islam and British Islam, the first thing I'd be asking you, Nikki, is um, has this question ever been asked about any other faith? Do, do we ever say, um, what's the British version of Sikhism, or British version of Judaism, or British version of... <laughs> so that's the first, first question I'm going to ask. I'm coming to, yeah. the answer, I'm coming to your answer. Um, when we're coming down to the theological arguments, I can come to that. But Islam is not just about the theological arguments that are between the jurists. Islam is all about love. Islam is about peace. Islam is about but, respect. But that's just it's, lip service when how much love can you have for someone for killing them for changing their mind? Okay. My question is, do you believe that there is a that. problem of extremism currently now? There is, do you believe there is actual problem? There is about people like yourself. There is absolutely... Well, like, uh, 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 what is exacerbated by people like Adam? Extremism is exas exacerbated. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I'll be back with yeah. you. A yeah. yeah. little bit of parenthesis here. Yeah, no, 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 it's, it's a couple of points that, that need to be explained. First of all, you said we're living in a time where you know, a lot of the Muslims, they're devoid of an no, no, ethical say, element. Hang on, let's, let's I answer say that. that bit of your let question. Finish. Know, let me let speak finish. So you speak about devoid of the ethical element. Where in West Yorkshire, when we had seen in Yorkshire region where there were floods taking place, was majority Muslims that were helping their fellow citizens. So where's the devoid, you know, you know being void of the ethical element? They were driven by their faith. So that's one important element. And secondly, when he talks about this, a vocal minority, the reality is this. From someone like Adam, who, who's part as an outreach director, which is a laughable you know, a title in itself for Quilliam. That's not a very you. pleasant thing. Yeah, and I don't think they're a pleasant don't organization. Worry, the thing is for them, it's this. It's they, keep, they, keep talk, they keep talking about how these people are taking over our country, they're doing this, they're subverting, subverting British values, etc. And really, the reality is, if you look at the academic literature, if you look at the reality of young British Muslims, none of that makes sense. And this question of British Islam, you talk to most young British Muslims, they'll tell you, look, I'm on about the weather, I queue up. I have Fish and Ship Friday. How much more do you want me to integrate into this country? What, team, tired of what that team, team do you support? I'm Arsenal. Oh, yeah. dear. Yeah. <laughs> OK, <laughs> no, Imam, I think you'll you agree you, you, you had a chance to make that point. And you know what? I'm going to be back to you later on because we've got a fair bit of time on this this morning. Good, good. Now, people will, yeah. uh, watching, think that you rather signally did not ask, answer Adam's question. So, th to be fair, answer the, uh, ask the question again, Adam. Yeah, please. I mean, do you believe that there is a... A, a, a problem within sort of the religious discourse. There is an element of extremism. And do you think that we should condemn the, the ruling on apostates, that we should kill them? Do you not, do you not think that's a problem? Abs absolutely. Put, uh, let me put it this way. Um, <laughs> Islam has, Islam has uh, freedom of choice and you can choose whether you want to be in Islam or whether out of Islam. And um, there is no compulsion of bringing somebody into Islam. No, no, but, no but you not into, into Islam, but if someone 
is a Muslim who decides not to be a Muslim? Do you think, think they the should? Question. Raza, I'll come to you in a minute. Yeah, you have yeah, to good, be patient. Good, good. Do come to me. Um, uh, you, you do you believe, pinning, one second, you, it, do you believe that person should be killed? You, you are pinning down one single argument of the jurist. The majority, and you are, the majority you are of the jurist, of the, the whole of the Muslims. The, I personally, let me... I personally think that person should not be killed. OK, I, but do you... If you're asking me about my... Would you let me speak? I've stopped. Yeah. <laughs> as, soon as, I, as soon as I begin to answer well, the question... I, I, I'm going to leave. I'll see you all so... later on. All right? <laughs> <laughs> I, Imam, carry on. I'm going to hear some women in just a second. Yeah. Don't worry. I, you know, come here. Imam, carry on. I, I personally think that that person shouldn't be killed. Well, that's my personal that's opinion. That's good. That's, that's good. But, which is great. That is which is great. Islam, that, that, that's my question. Islam is, is, Islam is much wider than that. Why are people just, if, 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 if you was to look at it that way, every single faith, every single democracy, they always have one or two caveats that majority of people do not agree with, and they are not looking at the larger picture. Well, I'm, I'm, and what I'm that does yeah, is... I'm, I'm, look, nuance, nuance. Happy, I'm, nuance. I'm extremely no. happy that you believe they shouldn't be killed. But the do you not believe? believe do you not? Do you not know it's that majority of the, the school's um, no, school of thoughts like actually believe that apostate should be killed, the and that we need to challenge I tell you what, these I'm going ideas? To, I'm going to. That's a, we're, up a little, we're not going to get any further with that. We had a kind of answer. Sahar, what would you like to say? And then I'm going to hear from Yasmin. I just Yasmin. wanted to say that the majority of Muslims and majority of school of thoughts they wouldn't say that they should be killed because they should be no, that's there, right. is, that's there is a main principle in the Quran where it says no compulsion in the religion. That's the reality. Reality. But the thing is, like, there's That's a lot of people reality. like you who feed into this anti-Muslim narrative that Muslims don't accept non-Muslims. Yeah. They are not willing to yeah. engage with them. And we feed back into the rise of this, this Islamophobia is mm. uh, kind of narrative. And who is the victim? Someone like me who is participating with the wider society, engaging, trying to implement the universal values of freedom and, and justice and second. pluralism that right. is not restricted, by the this way, is, to right. secularism okay. only. These are universal values, universal values, values Muslims, thank you. Christians Yasmin, and many other people. In just a second, but Adam, you were saying, you said, I just want to, I'm sorry to come back to another man, uh, but uh, you did say there, this is the problem. What do you mean, this is the problem? The, pro the problem is that when we accept such uh, doctrines, some theological ideas, that we should kill apostates. And, and for your information, there is a hadith, which is considered to be sahih, that says that, uh, uh, that kill anyone that changes their religion. And it's accepted by three schools of thought, but potentially four. So you really need to get your facts right. And we have uh, hate preachers, uh, Islamic scholars, visiting university campuses that are actually saying, yes, it's OK to kill apostates as long as they meet the conditions. That's like saying it's OK to rape someone if, as long as they meet the conditions. It's okay, absolutely Yasmin, absurd. Yasmin, um, is there a place in modern Britain for any kind of judgment on divorce or marriage or matters of relationships between two adult people for uh, Sharia courts? Absolutely not. Um, this is why we shouldn't have a British Islam. There will not be consensus. I think we've had multiculturalism, we've now got multi-faithism. What's wrong with Sharia courts? Sharia courts, are we saying to minority women, not just Muslim women, but best Jewish women when it comes to Beth Deans um, and other ecclesiastical courts? But marriage is an act the, of worship in Islam. It's a, a, an act of worship, it's also a contract. But are we saying that they should not, that Muslim women should not have equal access um, an equal opportunity to have access to the law in the same way that no non-Muslim women do. No one, there no is no regulation of Sharia uh, courts. And, and, and no one's saying that? First of all, there's a couple of things. They're not courts, they're arbitration councils in many cases. So important to not caricaturise the whole thing. That's, that's very important. Can I just no, 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 that that You can't understand. I think this is vital, Yasmin, because what happens is it's, we end up having a soundbite discussion and people need to understand. I would recommend people to actually go do some research. So, for example, A, the number of Sharia courts is grossly exaggerated. We often get the numbers from a Civitas um, you know, research document that says that they were possible possibly about 80 to 85, but again, mo mostly were uh, based on online websites. So the thing is, A, the numbers aren't that clear, they're, they're exaggerated. Secondly, the arbitration councils that aren't legally binding, that's the second thing. But thirdly, when we talk about Sharia courts in this way, what it does is it feeds into a narrative that these people are taking over our country, they, they're subverting our laws, and that's just not true. And really, it's, it's frustrating that it's people feed into this that's narrative. That's not what she said. Um, yes. no, but no, that's a big part of it, so these women should not have, well, um, no, they shouldn't have access 
to, you know, to, um, to our can courts. I, can I but, come no, back? Hang on, that's important, though, because you say you shouldn't have access to courts. Who's saying they shouldn't? The reality is people will go for arbitration within their own community as they do in other places. But the law should overrule everything. Binding. The law of the but, land surely should overrule it. But yes, yeah, as, as it does. Yes, sir, you've right. quoted Civitas. I'm, I've been doing this work for 30 years. And I have seen over that time that w Muslim women are being coerced and policed by their families. And, and part of it is also the government's fault, the legal aid cuts. So limited, less access to um, the English courts and actually seeking redress from the religious... Coercion and women is not a Muslim phenomenon. No, no, let me finish. 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 Then I'm going to get in the heat. Where, where I have seen women who said, I don't particularly want to go there, okay. but I'm being told that I have to go there. They don't want to challenge the judgments because they will then be seen to be challenging the word of God. The coercion of women is not a Muslim phenomenon. It's it not a Muslim phenomenon. I'm not society. saying it's a Muslim but, but, phenomenon. But, 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 wait, everybody. Wait, everybody. Yasmin, quickly, then. If you heard what I said, I also made reference to Beth Deans, which are Jew Jewish arbitration tribunals. Mm -hmm. Now, there were Beth Deans in operation. That was then, you know, Tony Blair's government used the Arbitration Act to extend it to the Muslim community. Why do we need a parallel legal system when we have the English courts who were there? I've seen Muslim tribunals oh, yeah. where women have been told to hand over their children to the fathers at the age of seven, which is contained within our religious texts. Nahid. I've seen women who have confidentiality is not respected. Okay. Can Nahid, I just, very just on the issue. Finish? Okay, very sorry, I um, asked and me where Women are going to have to yeah. speak with with the perpetrator of potentially, I mean, usually horrific abuse. Yeah. And no, they are in a room not, with four men, one woman sitting behind. Nahid, it's, 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 it's not acceptable. Thank you, Yasmin. Can Nahid. I make a correction? Because there is, I work with women from all backgrounds, not just Muslim women. I'm a Muslim woman, but I work with all other women. What uh, Yasmin just said is more about cultural. It's the oppressions of men comes, you know, we work with domestic women who are facing domestic violence. It's across the board. It's not just Muslim women. So don't try to, and it's what yeah. cultural practices we have within our family. I'm dealing with Hindu, Christian, Buddhist, stand, you know, the Christian families. We have got those oppressions. So we are not just only working with women from Muslim community. Mm. And in terms of Sharia court and Sharia council, some of the women, they feel comfortable going to Sharia court and that's their choice. And that's the choice they're making. Yes, yes, it's choice. Ari, can I yes, just, yes, are actually I'd dismissing I'd like the to hear from women for, for, for a little I'm, while, if I may. I'm really tired of that's cultural, this is religious. Oh, that's just got back but that's the real religious, religious practice. practice. We should what? separate Are you that saying that Islam, Islam actually, came in a... Excuse me, please let me finish. Are you saying that Islam came in a context where there was no patriarchy, where there was no misogyny? And that's Every what we can demolish that. We haven't gone back to the Islam. OK, everyone. OK, context. everyone. What about uh, 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 other aspects? I mean, uh, are, th are there any aspects of theology that need to be uh, reinterpreted? I wonder, what about... Um, saying that, um, Saha, you can maybe come to us on this and explain, because this, this is something that's maybe misunderstood from people who are out with Islam. Uh, a woman's word is worth half that of a man's. Um, uh, how can you, as uh, a, you know, an independent, intelligent, professional woman, ever accept that? Okay, so we, why well, we have to understand. I have the imam saying, let me answer that one. No. <laughs> let's. <laughs> let's. <laughs> no. let's I, if you like, can we get a woman no, to no, answer? No, no, I will, I will explain to you. <laughs> That's the thing, that there are some certain principles in Islam that are applicable in certain contexts. The, uh, the verse that you mentioned in the Quran, it is mentioned in the Quran, but in a certain context. When the woman does not, uh, uh, doesn't have uh, a, uh, or she does not have a dependent, uh, she has half of the inheritance. If she is in charge of her house, or she is the responsible for providing livings for her families, then she's got an equal share of inheritance with men. So it's not black and white, it's not a plain. No, her word all is worth half that, that of a you man's. Have to, you have to see these cases individually. You know, well, if there the needs women to be two women is... witnesses for one man. I, I How can you a... accept that? Adam, very quickly. Yeah, I think there's a confusion here. You're talking it... about a different verse. Uh, the, the, the sister here is talking about another verse. The verse says that. Um, when, in terms of a contract, so there's witnessing that, uh, that to every man there must be two women. And 
some of these kind of uh, extremist Muslims, puritanical Muslims, believe then, therefore, they extrapolate from that that a woman is uh, uh, less than a man uh, and their witness is less than a man. Um, and and it's, it's, not, it's not controversial, but what they misunderstand is that the, there's a rationale to the verse. It says, so the other one may remind her. So what that means is that the women in those times were not involved in financial transactions. So uh, uh, where, where we part with the extremists, that we would say modern society, women are engaged in public life, they are involved with financial transactions and they're competent. And we would say that that wouldn't apply today. Whereas extremist Muslims... And that's what they would say they would... Yeah. Uh, we're on the same side here. Um, extremist Muslims. Oh, that's, maybe. A, that's a shame. Yeah. That's we're why, on the same side. That's but can, why can I just say? But can I just say that the, the biggest of the driver text. of Islamophobia, because uh, Raza keeps talking about me perpetuating Islamophobia, yeah. the biggest driver of Islamophobia is denial that there is a problem to begin with. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest problem. No. And as, as for his, sorry, can I just finish? Um, as for his um, uh, jibe at me and making fun out of my position at Cullium, yeah. that's ironic, given that your, your leader of your organisation thought that he was persecuted by Mossad because they stole his shoe. And that's ridiculous. So please, keep well, your comments to yourself. Well, maybe, maybe, though, Raza, that does... You know, maybe it's a serious point there, because a lot of people, you know, Ashkar Bukhari, who's uh, was certainly a leading light in no your organisation... No problem. longer, but he was. Um, may, you know, a lot of people lampooned him for this, but maybe it, it does say something about the level of scrutiny and intimidation, that he was absolutely convinced that his shoes were stolen by Mossad, yeah. right? Yeah. Do you think they were, his shoes were stolen the by thing Mossad? Is, I, he's been harassed many times, so the thing is, it may be is true. Is it really yeah. important to talk no, about But the thing is, well, what's that got to do with the question, by the way? No, it, the thing is... Uh, well, 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 it I'm, might play to a certain sense of per a persecution complex, if, they, if Mossad broke into his house and stole yeah. one of his well, shoes. Th the thing is, it's, yeah. there's an article in The Guardian about how the Stasi had employed certain tactics of subversion for individuals in the past, even small things. You can read this article, it's in The Guardian, about changing the tea bags in people's homes making them feel they're losing their minds. I the mean, thing maybe is, it might be realistic <coughs> or um, no, hang on, sensible hang on. if they so stop. Right, 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 you know, the, the harassment of a Muslim activist who speaks out against Israel's occupation of Palestine, so, who critiques the government on draconian policies, to be honest, harassment of a Muslim like that is not that surprising at all. You talk to most yeah, Muslim but activists, the question is, they face it all the time. Issue? And look what Adam's doing right now, that we're did talking about issue? an issue about British Islam, talking about Sharia and stuff, and he brings in this issue. It's, it's ridiculous. No, no, I brought it's, it's in, in response to your claim. No, 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 the entirety of Islamic history, there have been more disagreements among Muslims about the truth mm -hmm. than agreements. Mm -hmm. And the current situation is not any different. And again, these terms that we are using, kind of conservative Islam, mm. extremism, they're all extremely contested. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you yes. mean exactly uh, by mm -hmm. conservative Islam? I mean, if you mean basically uh, conservative Islam representing kind of exclusionary ideas, if you think that conservative Islam kind of breeding supremacist ideas. Yes, this is exactly the heart of the problem. But the same term and the same kind of terminology is understood in so many different ways. And actually this quest to find the truth, actually this has been going on for a very long time. And that actually goes back to the heart of the discussion about if we need kind of British Islam or not. Because if you look at the ways in which Islam has been manifesting itself throughout history, Islam has been able to go and fuse itself with different cultural particularities. Is that happening in this country? Sorry, sorry, Raza. No, sorry, Dr. Shah. I, I appreciate your point about the, con the contesting of terms. That's a very valid point there. But I think what I find about this British Islam argument, for me, and for many of the young Muslims I've spoken to, is, is for me it's the colonial undertones, which is that what does a minority need to do more to fit in with the majority? And integration is not a one-way street, it's a two-way street. And, and reality, when you look at David Cameron's unhelpful comments about women need to learn English to you know, fight extremism, but there's no causal connection to extremism, when he, you know, when he talks about having a fund for English, 20 million, but then slashes it by 45 mil the year before, all these different mm. things, when you have you know, uh, people saying that we're against Sharia, and yet uh, George Osborne introduces the first ever Islamic bond system in this country under the coalition government, for many Muslims it goes, there's no consistency from Contra the government. Contradictory messages. Yeah, and and so, because, because, because there that, isn't a single Islamic community in and, this and country but this and representing right? Islam. And, and the heart of the problem is there are certain individuals or certain groups... Do we 
all that, have to be the same. No, we have to be ethical. Wait a minute, everybody. Wait a minute, everybody. Be quiet just for a second, please. Be quiet just for a second, please. Tasmina, you've been trying to come in. Archaic interpretations of religion, particularly those that run counter to gender equality, must be challenged. What runs counter to gender equality? Because there are there are many interpretations of this, and I'm I'm sure that Sahar and others would say that this is an outrageous thing to say. But they, you know, this is this is about self-expression. I mean, Sahar wearing the veil. That is about equality. That's about her making choices, and that's about freedom of expression and her uh, articulating her religious and political beliefs. Like, you know, so what are you talking about? We've already talked about gender segregation, but I'm talking about women's empowerment in religious spaces more broadly. If you go to a lot of mosques in the country, they don't even have adequate space for women. So a group of us a few but years ago decided you know, to set up our own mosque. I agree with you on this point. I agree with you on the inclusive thing mosque so, so Let's just hear which has has open, open, which, as far as I'm aware, is the only mosque in the country which has openly LGBT people on the committee, which creates an inclusive space even for ex-Muslims to come, if, if they want to, to come to our events and to, to listen I, from our perspectives. So we need an inclusive quickly. space that respects different viewpoints. Let's talk I, about women in Islam now. Now, Shah, we haven't heard from Naz yet. I promise you, uh, Sahar, we'll be out here. <laughs> Let's talk about women in, in, in Islam. And anyone wants to make a point about women's position in Islam, please do put your hand up. Uh, la la lady there in the second row, Naz, I'm going to be right with you. Uh, a quick point. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, what I don't understand is you live in Britain, right? So your, your loyalty, as far as I'm concerned, should be to Britain. You should abide by the, the laws of the land. So why are we even talking about shari Sharia councils? They, sh they should not even be here. You have well, issues. You have laws that are here that protect equality we've for heard, women. We've heard the answer children. to that. We've heard the very articulate answer to that from uh, Raza. But, uh, gentlemen, there, uh, with your hand up. Yeah, so, you. Everyone seems to have these conflicting points on the front row, and it's like, what if There's I didn't know anything about Islam? Yeah. What, type, what Muslim do I talk to to find out? It seems like it depends what Muslim you talk to, you get a different version of Islam. It's pluralism, isn't yeah, it? There are many different yeah. forms of Islam. And that's why, this, that's why this term, uh, the Muslim community, is so yeah. meaningless. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because there are so many different communities. It's about human beings. Uh, Nash Shah. I've Good morning. Good morning. You're MP for this neck of woods, Absolutely. Aren't you? First of all, welcome to my constituency. It's Bedford lovely. West. I love it here. It's good to have you here. So, what about uh, women in Islam? Is, I, is there a problem? I'm going to make a few points um, because I've been listening um, intensively to everybody and what everybody's had to say. And let me be really, really clear. In terms of women and Sharia courts, yes, there is an issue where women have, and I am aware of women that have gone to Sharia courts that have been encouraged to go back to violent partners. That has happened. But that, let's not confuse that with religion. Well done. Let yeah, me, let me be really clear about that. Okay? Second, I, I'm, I sit here as a woman who was very anti-Muslim men, was very <laughs> anti-Islam because of my cultural upbringing, because of the experiences of my mother and because of the experiences that I had. You had a forced marriage, now, didn't you? Yes, absolutely. However, 15 years ago, when I met some good Muslims who actually taught me about what real Islam was, I then learnt about Islam. And I don't have, and, and I really, really struggle with the fact that, you know, the lady over here is saying we've got a, a law. Let me be clear, I fought against, I campaigned nationally against the inequalities in the British justice system when it comes to women. So don't just call me, don't call me that is just an Islamic phenomenon, because the British justice system is not equal to women. And neither is any country. We have got inequality. Of but nice, nice Let me no, finish, no, this please. is important. Can I just, yeah. uh, can I just put this, this point in? It's, it's all about direction of travel, Absolutely. Though, isn't it? So let's, let's be clear. In terms of Sharia courts, in terms of where they act as mediatories, where there are bad practices, absolutely we need to yeah. rule that out. We exactly. need to make sure Agreed. women should not be encouraged to go back yeah. to violent partners. Yeah. Women should not be persecuted. Children exactly. should be held with respect. And so should women. They should be cut with equality. Now, coming back, and before you tell me that I'm personalising this, Adam, because I, I will not have that. What I will say, though, as for, as for Quilliam Foundation, and I will name the organisation, for me, only yesterday, I think it was, I read that the Quilliam Foundation had been uh, knocked back by 45 institutes in Australia, in Australia yeah. who refused to engage with them. <laughs> only yesterday, That's I was tweeted... Sorry, can I just answer? I, I've, given you, the respect. I've given you the respect to listen to you, and I expect that in return. <laughs> <laughs> 
Going back to the Quilliam Foundation without people, let's be clear, we have the Quilliam... I was tweeted yesterday with, as a member of the Home Affairs Select Committee, I took evidence from Quilliam, and I asked Quilliam, and I put this out again, once again, the Quilliam Foundation sit here and tell us that we are in denial. We are in denial of what exactly? To me, the Quilliam Foundation is stripped of all credibility yes. when it says we are in denial of things, when actually uh, in Bradford there is no denial, there is an issue of radicalisation, there is an issue of safeguarding, there are issues where people, well, the likes of Daesh, reach into our homes through social media, through the internet. That is, nobody is denying that. I think it's what, we are, what we are different, where we are okay. different, is our responses to that issue. We will uh, address some of those issues of uh, radicalisation and security in, in a few moments. Vitally important. I, uh, it behoves me to give Adam a response to yes, what you said. Yes, um, well, thanks for that. Um, it was very cute. Uh, but what I would say is that you said it's got nothing to do with religion. Uh, the, when, when we say that religion has something to do with Sharia courts and, and partners going back to... Um, uh, going back to their, uh, their spouses because of, uh, and, and they're still a victim of domestic violence. You say that ha we have to make a distinction with religion, but the whole point of going to a Sharia council is because of religion. And one of the reasons they used to justify the, them returning back to their abusive partners is because they believe the Qur'an mandates beating women. So, yes, not all cases, but there are some cases and that we must... But that's no, no, like one anything, second, no, that's no, like let me finish. Now, let me finish. So, there is a sense of denial here that there is a problem in the way that we read the Qur'an. I don't believe that the Qur'an mandates beating women, but a lot of Muslims of the scholar, scholarship, let's a say... Lot. They a lot. Lot. One second, a lot. Yeah, 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 now, let me finish. Imam, let me finish. Imam. Can wait I, a minute, wait a minute. Can I just come in on the Sharia... Can I just come in on the Sharia courts, just to touch in... Oh. And, uh, We've kind of moved off. on a little bit. I know you have, but it was important. I didn't ask to intervene at that time. Um, when you're saying... Is there a, a different system altogether? Not at all. We have the laws of this country. Sharia courts are not two parallel systems. They are there to supplement the courts that are already there. That's the first thing. And the, and the second thing which comes in, um, those women who are actually going to the Sharia councils, I don't know where this court system came. Originally they were named as Sharia councils. Um, they are going on their own accord. Nobody is actually asking them to Yasmin go. says now, not. Yasmin. That's it. That's can I... Can no, I, can no, I, can no, I, no but, but lots of people want to hear from you. And you made those points very well. Yasmin. Right, there's a couple of points. Because it was a key point you made there's, there about going of their own accord. There are two responses. Absolutely, Naz. Um, Southall Black Sisters and others were involved in, in, in your personal case, and I was you know, part of that. So... You, but we've seen the English courts develop. As society develops, the, the courts also develop. My issue is that we are setting up a parallel system. The other thing is it's reduction. That's exactly what can I said. It's can not I, a parallel system. But it's can I supplementing just, the system. With, and that's why... I, I, in Mums Up, can I just say, but in my said, experience... You're going on your own accord because you let, uh, the can, same thing that you can achieve from a Sharia court... Speak. Let me tell you from a theological can you let her speak? side. She hasn't can, finished. You can, actually, <laughs> you can actually achieve from a normal English system, uh, from the magistrates uh, as right. well. Right. Can I just... So the khula that you're talking about, or the divorce, <laughs> that can no. be... Oh, wait, OK, OK. okay right. Ready, can I, can I just steady, please... go. Right, can I please make this point? I have got vast experience of women who do not want to go to those systems, but are pressured. Mm. OK, mm -hmm. so that, that's one. I've also seen situations where men, both Jewish men and Muslim men, withhold religious divorces. And that can hold up proceedings where there is pressure, huge pressure on the women that I've worked with in terms of child custody and where that works. My, my whole issue with this is, why do we need a supplementary system? Can I, can I, no, 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 wait a minute. The we, 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 spent, we spent some good time we, discussing yeah. Sharia a few but months ago. We came back to it. Nikki. We've got, yeah. When we talk about minority women, they have culture. We right. talk about minority women. I'm, I'm going to are, ask. Are we uh, just <laughs> Muslims? Are we nothing else? Do our national and ethnic identities. I'm going to ask Nahid about this, and, and, and I will be with on you, Raza. women specifically, not uh, about Sharia. Yeah, I want to talk about women. That's where we are at the moment. That's why I'm desperately trying to steer it. Desperately trying to steer the conversation to that. Uh, so, I mean, we heard uh, from Nasdaq, who was in a forced marriage, mm. and saying that a lot of these things are cultural. 
um, uh, Nahid. Do you think that when we're talking about uh, these issues, uh, FGM, clearly cultural, mm. nothing to do with Islam, forced marriage, clearly cultural, mm. nothing to do with Islam, uh, gender segregation, forced, uh, that, clearly that's a, you know, some argue that is a theological issue, wearing the veil, some argue that is, mm. many argue v vehemently that, it, that it's not. But do you think there are many Muslims who believe it is a part of Islam when it's not? And if that is the case, there is a problem there, isn't there? If, yeah, that's the problem we are yeah. facing every day because people don't have understanding about true Islam. And if, if there are Muslims and who believe that, you, you can bet your but bottom dollar there's going to be non-Muslims who believe that. Can I just say, Muslim comes from all, all part of the world. They're just not just Indian, Pakistani or Bangladeshi <laughs> or Arabian. Muslims bring their culture with that. And they and confuse that's their culture with their religion. Yeah, so lots that's of, the problem. Uh, who that's, should represent that true Islam? No, the true... Because nobody... Because Islam on No, can Catholic I just finish Islam, that? Please. Because I've been actually working with women from all culture. I've seen they're facing these problems again and again. This is across the board. Also, actually, a lot of the women, they come to us, they wanted to go through the Sharia law, although a lot of the scholars within Islam said, if you take a divorce, from the court within UK, it's acceptable. And that's what they said. I've taken to them, but these, some of the women, they, this is their choice because they want to feel comfortable to go to Sharia court. We've taken them to, because we didn't want them to I think face it's... that oppression because Islam doesn't believe in oppression or oppressing other people. And that's the but message. But there are cultural but aspects that are in clearly that you're saying is a problem. No, uh, uh, domestic uh, violence is an oppression and that's what Raza. I've seen. Okay, Raza. I, I, um, I think I've got to say, now it's giving, there's, there's nuance. What you're saying is there is some coercion, yeah. but there's some choice too. And you keep, choice, you keep shaking your head when there's choice involved. Choice. And I think yeah. that's wrong. You have to admit there's choice involved. But regarding the point about women and subjugation of women or them not being denied rights, it's not a religious only phenomenon as, as Naz pointed to. It's something that exists in our society. So look at unequal pay of women in this country. No, but this is important. Direction though. of travel. Oh, no, but no, but this is, this you is understand that? No, but this is vital though because I do feel this is a part of white privilege. That it's any case of. Um, what does that mean? Yeah, let me explain. I'll explain white right privilege. now. It's, it's, if a Muslim commits a crime or it's sub subjugating women, it's indicative of a wider problem within their culture, their religion. But you've had someone from a white Christian background. So, for example, University of Lancaster said after the World Cup that they found there's a 38% increase in domestic violence cases after people watching um, football matches in, in the UK. Now, they're not all Muslims that commit these, these domestic violence cases. But you would not say this is indicative of a white Christian problem because you realize the criminal is separate from, from, you know, from, his, from his ethnicity, from yeah. his religion. But when it comes to Muslims, it must be your religion. And we're tired of that. We're tired of that. Yasmin, Yasmin, respond. Are Sahar. we partly to blame as Muslims? And do, just hear me out, yeah, please. Yeah. Is that we were South Asian you yeah, know, in, exactly. back in the 70s, and then Salman Rushdie came, that the whole satanic. And Bosnia as well, of course. But let's focus on, on the satanic verses, and that's where Muslim identity really well, came to the fore, and everything else was this two back. bits to hang on. And then you had okay. community leaders who were then coming forward and saying, this is the identity box that we will fit, hang fit on, into. This is vital, they though, use that to get Please don't downplay access. Bosnia, because Bosnia... I'm not downplaying Bosnia. No, no, but Bosnia. you did say, let's just focus on Rushdie. I said, and I want, because, because that, that was the trigger. That was the trigger. OK, let me just... Let me just... Everyone's... Everyone's... Wait a minute. No, you can't shout each other down, you know? I'm telling you. But it's not. I'm all... telling you. <laughs> you can't shout each other down. Sahar, you wanted to come in here. Yeah, what, just... that, tell me about the issue that gets a lot of people really exercised. Uh, uh, you know, gender segregation in public places. Mm. Some people see that happening and they get infuriated. They see it as being, if you'll let me, allow me to say, they see it as being absolutely contrary mm. to uh, Western liberal society. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're sitting here. We're free mixing. It's all fine. So what, I'm what, happy with it. Right. I have no problem with What's it. What's the argument for, yes. for gender segregation? Because you know it's a live, lively debate, that. It's, it's not really big debate. And, and to be honest, <laughs> it's not a topic that should be even discussed. The we, problem it's not is, a topic that no, should let, be discussed. Because there's, let, me, let me explain one thing. Muslims are being singled out for every single practice that they've been doing. So what is that? You know, 
remember when we talk about but women and domestic women. abuse, when we oh, talk about domestic a, abuse, back on that. two <laughs> women in England that. are being killed every week, mm -hmm. yet we don't ever mention that. We don't associate it with any faith any or race or anything. Yeah. We discuss domestic violence Muslim, on a regular basis. You know what? They are but forcing segregation, which is not true. There are, it's, it's, like, it's women it's only white, events. It's black, it's black. There are, like, you know, some, some, some Muslim women. Can I just finish? Some. Well, she's allowed to wear what she wants to wear. I want to. I, 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 I take your point about some things that are underplayed and not reported on, but it is an issue. Ad, Adam, Adam Dean, and Sahar, you, you did make your point. But Ad, Adam Dean, there is a political. There are political meetings, and people are, are separate. And it, it, Sahar says it's not an issue that should be discussed because there are other issues. Well, believe me, we do discuss those it's other not issues. It's an issue within the Muslim community. Well, there it's an issue like, for other people. There are though. like women-only events that women chose to organise it that way, and they wanted it to be that yeah, way. Yeah, but in public spaces, people, do, you, do you respect why, people who find why, it offensive? Why are we no, talking? Right, why? Okay. Like, actually, can I just say, we've developed a women consortium in Leeds, 13 women's organisations, they're not Muslim organisations, came together and they wanted to be together. Why is it done? We can feel problem? comfortable, so it's not a Tamina. problem. They wanted to be that way. Tamina, what's going on here with this? Because it's, it's an issue, we, we should discuss it, because a lot of people find it offensive. A lot of people cannot understand why those find it offensive, because there's women only this, there's, women, there's men only this, but this is forced gender segregation, that's how people it's see it. Is it a problem? It is a it's big a problem, choice. and for me... It's the, a choice. The biggest... She says it's a choice. Is, is it, it a, choice? a choice when it takes place in a public university? No, it's not. It's one small group of people enforcing their own brand upon others who don't agree with it, and that's exactly why it has well, to be when resisted. When you say forced, like, do they have, and then like, when a public men body, outside like the University of UK, them? gives credence to, to narrow and conservative interpretations of Islam, unchallenged... What do you mean? Forced though. Sahar's just saying, and I'll come back to you, Sahar. Sahar's just saying, no, I don't know if you caught it. She's saying, what, what do you mean forced? Is the policeman outside? Are the policemen corralling it? Are the security people saying, you sit there and you sit there? No, but the conditions are created so that anybody who dissents <laughs> or who doesn't, ab who <laughs> publicly opposes this particular interpretation of Islam is treated as a pariah. And that has to stop. The, the sort of progressive interpretations need to be gr given greater space in Muslim discourse, thing. which it's is not preference. happening at the moment. Do you know why this I, is Sahar. I, I said it's not a theological thing. It's, it's, it's a preference. Some women chose yeah. to, to be to that event. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. It's not excuse forced. me, everyone. It's not forced. Look, I am no, Ashin, Ashin, I'll be with you in a second. Sahar. Yes. Thanks. What would you like to say? <laughs> okay. Well, I wanted to say that forced segregation, it's not really a big issue within the Muslim community. There are so many but, mixed events okay. that Muslim women are happy Let to go to. Let me put this to you. It's one of those things. Let me put this to you, please. I understand. I understand. Let me put this to you, please. Some people why, see... Why please listen to me. Why are we demonizing Muslims? Why no, are we demonizing please, them I want for to ask certain you a question. practices? That is very I right. want to ask you a question. Can, do, you understand, do you have respect for people who see it and see it as... I'm not saying I do. I'm not saying... You see it as inimical to our society when they see the men and the women in public space, university or whatever, sitting apart. Do you, do you respect their position? I, what I want to say is that we need a mutual understanding. I want to know why did she come to this view? Did she really attend this event? Has she interacted with these women? You know, I, I, I wanted to know that how did you actually conclude Let that? Let her answer the question. Because, like, a lot of women chose to wear with their own, uh, chose to sit within their own group in a venue out of Let their choice. Let her answer the question. They don't At want to be with men. My university is Islamic so society. Is problem that they don't want Let to Let her answer the, the question. question. My university you know, if you were in a restaurant, I had to sitting sit on a table. Let her please answer table. the question. I had to sit in a gender segregation event at a university Islamic society where I couldn't even ask questions because it was yeah. deemed to be immoral. I had to ask my question on a piece of paper and give it to someone to take up to the I'm audience in a second. Now, Sahar, please, Adam Dean. Yeah, I, I think it's important to say Let's that right. um, the problem does exist and it is a sort of obsession with sex. There is a type of reading of Islam that's obsessed with sex and the, uh, the potential uh, uh, um, the potential situation where you may, you know, suddenly have some sexual encounter with some woman. 
Um, but but the, the, to, to put it into context, this isn't a widespread problem. There is a small minority of Muslims exactly. that hold... I agree with you. Hold, yes. but, I mean, okay, but... but, but yes, um, you amplify... No, no, but, no, what I'm saying is... No, what please I'm let him finish. It's so if I, if I please let say, people talk, talk. You really don't like me, but um, we can talk afterwards. <laughs> um, no, um, <laughs> but can I just say... Like say? Adam Dean, audience in a minute. Audience in a minute. Oh, please, but again, please, let's all... Listen, so I'll go put no, the kettle on. We'll all have a nice cup of tea. I just okay. like to speak. Adam. Yeah, I, I think it's not, it's not widespread and um, that we have to sort of put it into context. But the point is that uh, it's disingenuous to say that it has nothing to do with religion. There are individuals that believe that it's prohibited exactly. to free mix. That for, yeah. We haven't heard from you yet. Good morning. Well, <laughs> it's interesting when... <laughs> well, it's interesting when one of the biggest phenomena, you know, att att attracting Islam today is people that hijack Islam and yes. are people like Daesh who attract our young people within this country yet young people don't get a say on platforms equally <laughs> as many of the people do. Uh, and it's maybe because we believe they don't have a say. And I'm going to say a point which might make me get battered from both sides of the debate. I'll protect I think you. A, I, I think that there's a lot of valid points. I think, you know, we have to understand there are issues. And I think we missed a core argument. When we talk about what is British Islam, are we talking about, like Saeed Avasi said, that our mosque should built, be built in a British fashion? No I minarets, think, yeah. No minarets and be, be built in a, in a, in a British fashion. Did you find that bizarre? No, I didn't actually. I, I welcome that. I think that will take away the alienation of Muslims, you know, mm. but it shouldn't be something forced. Do we have problems with women not you know, admitted to mosque committees? Yes, we do. Do we have young people? Mm. Uh, problems with young people not being admitted? We have problems in here. Nobody's <laughs> denying it. But to wish wash that, oh, well, I've been put in a certain perspective and I face this problem, let's change the whole of Islam. I think that mm. is a very big assumption to mm. make. Mm. And, and one, one thing I do want to say, I think it's very important that we remember, as liberals, as somebody who supports democracy, and the letter of toleration by John Locke, the difference between religion and state. So if in, in public spaces, I don't support forced segregation. But if there is a choice within religious settings, then the state is not to intervene. That's different. That's yeah, different. That is different. We must maintain that. You mentioned that. John Locke. It's, it's lovely to have a, a bit of enlightenment on the programme. <laughs> you know. Uh, right, let's, let's hear from the audience. Uh, lady there, good morning to you. Good morning. I think that um, unlike other religions such as Christianity, it seems that like Islam doesn't seem to have a hierarchical system like a pope that can, Top down, yeah. Yeah, that can dictate what is right and wrong and what is haram and what is accepted. Therefore, as somebody that's a non-Muslim, how do I decide that somebody who is deemed moderate and using the Quran to justify their decide actions is a, is a Muslim decide and somebody yourself. an extremist that uses the Quran also to justify their actions isn't? That's what I think confuses a lot of non-Muslims. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, the gentleman there in the, in, the, in the dog collar. Uh, yeah, uh, to be honest, it was more than... No, no, uh, excuse me. Are you in front of you? Yes, yes sir, go on. Well, I'm now I'm certainly confused about um, what, what is a true Muslim and, and, and otherwise. We're talking about British. What denomination are you? Uh, I'm um, Pentecostal. Christian. Pentecostal. Pentecostal. <coughs> do you welcome? Do you welcome the Church of England mm. bishops? Exactly. Do you welcome that? Oh yes, I do. Oh well. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, the counter question but, could be. Which is the true version of Christianity? Exactly. Ah, which yeah, is, but, yeah. yeah, but, but exactly. we, uh, we, we're, not dis <laughs> we're not discussing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the question. <laughs> that Come back next week. Yeah, that's another problem. That's yeah, another go on, problem. Sir. Yeah, yeah, had you finished? Yeah, I don't but, think you have. I mean, it, it is serious. And, um, you know, what is the uh, true Muslim? And we're talking about British um, Muslim, mm -hmm. which is, should be distinctively British, which must be different to the um, Islam of Syria, where people seem to think that they have a license to kill. Mm. They, they yeah, have but a that's man... not Syrian Islam, do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, Syrian <laughs> yeah, Islam... That's killing people. Yeah, <laughs> so they, they have a okay. license... Yeah. Well, we, 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 just to they, This yeah. needs to be very clear, right? They think they have a license to kill, they have a mandate to mo uh, murder... A mandate... Syrian, that's not Yeah, it's OK, it's OK. <laughs> they have a mandate to murder infidels. We're talking about people who've left um, Islam being murdered, but what about the infidels, right? And, and my, my question is, where, where do people um, like ISIS, where they get their oxygen, right? It's, it's, listen, it's a, uh, do you know what? Yeah. We've got 
10 minutes left, yes. and no way are we going to get into the complexities of that situation. Know, but, 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 but listen, no, please, be, because, please, let me, let yeah, me, let me move it on. You've made your point, let I me think, move it on. And thank you for doing so. I mean, we already Passion. established that there are a lot of confusion between what is cultural and what is religious. So this is, this is, this is the first point that I wanted to Can we talk uh, now highlight. about radicalisation? Yeah. But again, I want to kind of tie this to something extremely important, which was actually ignored. Uh, in, in the discussion. It seems that maybe there is an interest, perhaps for a theological revolution, which would all of a sudden make uh, kind of Islam compatible with Britain. But I think most of the problems that we have among the Muslim community, actually they're not theological, they are economic. I think the economy is, is the heart of the problem. Yeah. The very fact that 46% yeah. of Muslims live in some of the poorest and deprivedest councils in this country, this is the heart of the problem. The fact that over 24% of Muslims never worked or had the chance to work, despite the fact that the general uh, national figure is only 4%, this is the heart of the problem. Yeah. And, and you really cannot mm. primarily focus on the theological issues mm. or only cultural I issues agree. when you kind of uh, ignore the wider exactly. context. I when agree. basically a, there is a huge sense of marginalization. Does that leave that marginalization, that sense of iso uh, isolation, no, but alienation? It's not, it's not only that about, it's not on about the cultural. Extremism. Yes, I understand. Does that lead? I want to talk about that. Yeah, there are enough evidence to suggest that kind of economic deprivation. Uh, basically, that's marginalization. But that's not true. Adam, Adam, of course, but, you, but can't, that, you can't second, completely but, but, ignore okay, the Okay, you can't completely ignore but, it. But that's Adam, not, true. That's Adam not true of Muslims that are born and bred in the West. They are educated. Stats show that the no, majority no, no, of Muslims in the UK are educated. No, no, no. Of, of course, Muslims in this country no, no, no. live in some of the poorest no, no, councils of course, in the country. Let Adam respond. Of course, there are factors. There are factors such as you know the power vacuum that has been created. The tension between Shia and Sunni, you know, um, the invasion of Iraq, uh, the pulling out of troops of, of Iraq. These are factors, of course, but to, to the exception of ideology, is just pretending. When an ISIS person, a member of ISIS, executes uh, someone who he deems to be an apostate and shouts Allahu Akbar, why should we but doubt that it's by religion? Mabin Hussain, from the founder of British Muslim not, Youth, ISIS. I want to talk about this. What, do you know anyone? Have you come across anyone, or do you know anyone who knows anyone, who has been, do you think, drawn towards, uh, you know, radicalisation, extremism, and if so, why? Can I just make a quick, a quick point? Well, it's a long question, but, well, I, you know... It's a long question, I want to make a quick point on the last point. We've talked about theology and ideology, but nobody's mentioned that we had over 300 scholars worldwide come to Marrakesh and have a renovation, in a sense, uh, of our scholarly of thought on minority rights in Marrakesh. Yeah, yeah. And we, nobody talks about that kind of stuff. Why? Why we have now. But, so, but, on, 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 but on this specific issue, I think, you know, the biggest problem we have is... We, look, personally, I still haven't, until today, met a single person. It's not a big phenomenon, but we have a problem because any one young person that goes off to Syria, if, even if it's a 16-year-old Tala Asmal making huge political decisions to go out there and make this you know, drastic choice, but the problem comes is why are we talking about empowering young people, including young people? You know, if they're trying to, if ISIS are there, you know, saying to Tala Asmal, a 16-year-old, you can fly all the way to Syria, and we're telling our 16-year-olds, you're not even allowed to put a tick on a box at an ele election. Have you seen the type of empowerment, the voice and influence that we need to give to our young people and, and include them into the debate? It's the echo chamber of social media and the lack of critical thinking and just receiving one narrative yeah. and not and another. Exactly. Nasser yeah, I, I must say that it's, Dr. Ashwin Shah, you mentioned a very valid point about actually we must look at the factors that lead to a person wanting to commit acts of political violence. Yeah. It's, so, you know, you've got economic issues, you've got social issues, you've got political issues. Mm -hmm. But I think this is where I take real, uh, uh, real contentions with people like Adam Dean is that it's, they want to focus right, on saying that it's a religious phenomena because actually if you look at academic studies, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll cite some, oh, Professor David gosh, Manchin, come Bath. on. Hang on, hang on, let me finish. Let, let's be clear about that. Because it's please. important God. to include yeah, let's be, academia. Let's be clear about that. Adam, you'll respond to this in a minute. No, yeah. Not yet. It won't, it won't affect your funding from the government, I promise. Uh -huh. The thing is, Dr. Rizwan Sabir we, we've from, been from funded the University of Liverpool for years. Nazaruddin finish, and then here's the plan. Here's the plan. Raz is going to finish his point, then I'm going to go to Adam to respond to it. Thank you. After that, who knows? <laughs> the thing Raza. is, it's, so you've got uh, uh, Dr. Rizwan Sabir from Liverpool, John Moores University, you've got Aaron Kunani from America, you've got writers like Nathan Lane. And they well. say what? And what they say is this, that it's, to say it is a religious phenomenon is actually empirically incorrect. You cannot, no, sir, it, you, there's actually no sound study that points to that. And the only people that push this sort of idea 
are those that sit with the government at the table in this country who say, yeah, you know what, it's nothing to do with your bombing people or supporting, you know, dictators no, in the Middle East. It's, it's all to do with the understanding of religion. Even, you know it's more complex than that. Yeah, I am yeah, doing This is a caricature then, yes, of, of my position and the Quilliam's position. We, we understand that there are many, many factors, Which but we say? can't deny that religion and ideology play an important part. That's so just, that's why, just, why, that's just why, Whilst I was listening to Raza, Nazir made a comment that we're funded by right wing. We certainly uh, have well, well, we've, and, well, then, that, you know, that's guilt by association. That, if what? you let me finish, that's guilt by association. Let's not, you, let's not make it about this no, no, Quilliam no, no, think tank. No, no, no. Let's make but, it about you know, what we're talking about. That's guilt by association. And also, by the same token. Excuse me, everyone. I want to talk about radicalisation. And I want the response to what Nazir Razim said, which was very interesting. And I want to hear more interesting stuff from Adam. Then yeah, I, I want to speak to Yasmin. Look, I, 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 I said this before, that to deny that ideology plays a part is just ridiculous. Who, who said what we, If you let me finish... How the ideology is formed. The let let, uh, Ashen, let, let him loud. finish. Language. What I, <laughs> what I, it, it, what you have to understand the phenomenon of ISIS. It's not about just fighting against foreign fighters, ridding of them, occupation of their land. It's more than that. It's that and a hell of a lot more. It's about living this, in this utopian Islamic state. And the gravitas, their gravitas comes from operating in an environment of Islamism and Wahhabism. Nikita, they are touching Nikita, upon these ideas to recruit Nikita. young people. And to deny this is furthering the recruitment of ISIS. And as, and may I just finish? Uh, you know, Quilliam has been mentioned here, and I don't know why. That's because you're part well, of but, 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 you know, we John should be, talking, we ch we should be talking about ideas. A Qu a Quilliam Foundation is about count countering radicalisation and extremism by basing it uh, upon human rights, OK? And I don't understand what, what problem that you have with the Quilliam Foundation. Could you two discuss this later on? Yasmin, you wanted to come in. OK, shake in a minute. Yasmin, what did you want to say? I am really tired of this victim narrative. Yes. Of course there are pockets. <laughs> Huge economic deprivation uh, amongst Muslims in this country, but we are not, we are not the only community. Mm -hmm. If you look at um, prison statistics, it's disproportionately African-Caribbean men. Stop and search, search is still disproportionately African-Caribbean men. I'm not by any, by any means dismissing the experiences of Muslim people, but we have a political representative here. You've mentioned Saeed Avasi. We have representation in the arts, in academia, in the political processes. We are not this downtrodden community. We are, that but we are there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So I am there to fight racism. I am there to fight racism. I am too. Prejudice. I am too. So now. Don't, so but don't, that victim narrative, that victim narrative is destroying It is fundamental. It is feasible. I am not the extremist. I am not the victim. I am a survivor. I'm a very clear survivor. Listen, excuse me. This little triumvirate is not working for me. Yeah. OK, Sheikh. Um, first, I'm going to start off by saying I don't know why it's so much airtime is being given to Adam. Is that because he's... Oh, for goodness sake. But let's listen, listen. listen. Start. This, is a, democ this, is, a, this is a democratic forum. Can I just and ask you ask Because people keep bringing up my name. Oldham, Burnley, Leeds, Bradford. Okay, all right. We've been doing it for a number of years. Uh, brothers, come on, come on. Here we are. See, this is what happens. Can I, can I make so, this point? My actual point. Yeah. I'm not paying for your licence fee. And that's the actual and point. That's, <laughs> and Nikki, and he's a friend of mine as well. <laughs> <laughs> and that shake. Yeah. You were talking about radicalisation and extremism. That's where you stopped, and that's where I like to come in. I didn't but, stop you. Yeah. Well, no, I said that's where the. the All right. The, sorry. Sorry. Where, sorry. No, you didn't it's stop good me. to hear. Hey, shake. Do you agree with me? It's good to hear lots of different voices. Absolutely, yeah. we should. Yeah. It's Let's discuss with each other in a democratic, civilised forum. Absolutely, yeah. we yeah. should. Um, my, my only point was that rather than giving one person more time than others, that was my problem. Um, Radicalisation, it, it does happen. Extremism, what is extremism? That's the next question. Where does it happen? I wish we all knew. Because um, the first thing that the government is trying to say is it's happening in the masjid, because we are coming from the uh, religious aspect. The government is trying to say it's happening in the masjids and in the madrasas, and categorically it isn't, yeah. because there is not a single case, an MI5's leaked report to the Guardian, and the Royal United Services reports to the Guardian actually 
uh, gives credence in the sense that it's not happening so there. Fazel, is, is it, it happening, is it happening in happening? bedrooms? Bedrooms, is it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where is it happening and where, what's on top of the list? Well, right on top of the list it's coming, it's social deprivation. Yeah, it's fa family bre breakdown. 20 it could... <laughs>